Um, our next speaker is John Kubali, who you all know as um, the co-PI of the SBECCC. Um, John is a, uh, received his PhD in public health from the University of Michigan, um, where he studied um, respiratory uh, viruses um, among young children, um, primarily in Nicaragua, I think, to start off with. Um, and then while he was working on that, the COVID um, epidemic broke out um, and his, uh, his research has shifted. We are really pleased that he um, uh, um, moved from his postdoc at um, the School of Public Health to join us um, as an assistant um, research professor, a research assistant professor um, at, um, at ICPSR here at ISR. John. Thanks, Maggie. Um, let's see. Let me figure out how to get my slides up. Is there anything else? Uh -huh. Oops. Yeah, I was trying to find the mouse. I couldn't see it. There oh. we go. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right. Well, thank you for that. And uh, it's so nice to see you guys. Thank you for, for joining us, you know, uh, uh, here in Michigan. Um, I'm sorry the weather today is not quite as nice as it was yesterday. Hopefully it'll get a little bit better this afternoon and maybe tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of some of the things that we've uh, done at the coordinating center and then some of the things that uh, we've been working with you guys about, um, you know, in the consortium uh, since our last meeting uh, in September. Um, and then talk about some, some kind of potential next steps and, and uh, kind of give you guys a sneak peek of some of the discussions that we're hoping to, to have with you guys over the next uh, day and a half or, or so, or two days. Um, so just as a, a quick reminder, here are kind of the, the key folks uh, as part of the coordinating center. So you already are, are hearing from me right now, you've heard from Maggie. Um, and uh, you'll also see uh, Jim McNally um, and, and Megan and, and Chloe around. And unfortunately, Amy uh, Pienta can't join us uh, in person. She's currently helping her daughter prepare for Olympic trials. So uh, we're, you know, uh, are going to be pulling for her uh, for those, those swimming trials. Um, but she will be online as well. Um, so for the folks that uh, are not um, uh, or were not here last year, just wanted to give you kind of a quick reminder of what the Coordinating Center's aims are. So uh, we have kind of five key aims where it's research and collaboration, dissemination and publicity, guidance and support for consortium members, uh, pilot project grants, and then obviously the, the annual meeting where we are right now. And we'll talk a, a little bit about each of these things um, as we kind of go through some of our accomplishments and then uh, next direction or next steps. So as I mentioned, this is kind of the, the overall outline. We'll talk a little bit first about uh, some of your accomplishments and the amazing work that you guys have been doing over the last three years. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing ourselves at the coordinating center um, and then uh, go into some potential next steps. Um, so first, I just want to kind of say how exciting it is to be, you know, uh, ending our third year of this coordinating center or of this consortium. You know, I think we're, we're getting to the point where, you know, we're able to actually really start seeing some, some interesting results from a variety of studies. And that's extremely exciting for us at the coordinating center where, you know, we're all, you know, uh, you know researchers and are interested in this. And so it's it's nice to be in that kind of central position where we're constantly getting to see the interesting work that you guys are doing. Um, and you guys have been extremely productive. So over three years, we have 36 U01 funded journal articles. Uh, we have eight working papers uh, or preprints and even one book section. So uh, very productive uh, you know, uh, group that you guys are and we appreciate it. Um, we've also, you know, us being uh, based out of uh, ICPSR, um, you know, we've, we've been working hard uh, with you guys on, on different data products, and we're really excited about these. And so, um, you know, with uh, Claire Camp Dush, uh, you know, in, in her group, uh, we have the IFMS uh, Contextual Determinants of Health. With uh, Philippa Clark and Grace Knoppert, we have uh, the, you know, the amazing NANDA data that we've been working with. Um, we're currently working uh, with Dr. Rita Hamad uh, to uh, curate her U.S. COVID-19 county policy database uh, that I think you guys have, have all heard about uh, quite a bit. And then uh, the National Wellbeing Survey from uh, Dr. Shannon Monnet um, at Syracuse University. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about um, you know, some of the work that we've been doing with, with Shannon to make that, those data publicly available. 
Um, we've also, uh, you guys have been really helpful in, uh, in, in us getting the, uh, the COVID measures archive up off the ground, which is uh, for those of you who have not uh, you know, heard Megan and I talking about this uh, constantly uh, since last year, uh, this is a, you know, primarily a variable level metadata uh, archive. And it was really kind of designed to help encourage or nudge uh, you know, folks in you know, uh, using measures that you know, are able to be harmonized or make measures more comparable across studies. And so this was something that we uh, established and launched last year. Um, I think just before our annual meeting in uh, September. And already we have 22 studies, uh, over 8,300 variables, and six contributing uh, research teams. And that's still continuing to grow. So we really appreciate you guys uh, you know, being uh, part of that and being so engaged in that process. Uh, we've also been working hard, you know, as we've kind of moved out of, you know, letting people know that, hey, SBECCC exists, you know, we're, we're this interesting consortium, we're, do we're doing a lot of cool work. Uh, to you know, talking about and providing opportunities for, for researchers to, to talk about the research and the findings that they're, that they're coming up with. And so we were, we were fortunate to have an invited session at PAA uh, last month uh, that several uh, consortium members were a part of and presenting kind of their, their latest results, which was really fun. Um, we were also, and thank you to Dr. Gajwan C, who invited uh, the Coordinating Center and, and uh, some of the U01 uh, participants here at uh, the University of Michigan to, per, to basically be part of a panel discussion at the SRC uh, annual meeting or monthly meeting. Um, and this is also not to say that these are all of the, the issues, uh, the, uh, the collaborative presentations. There have been others that uh, you know, we've put together, but you know, haven't unfortunately been uh, successful. Um, but we do appreciate you guys, uh, the work that goes into that. And it really, it does mean a lot. Um, so now kind of shifting gears to talk a little bit more about what the coordinating center uh, has been working on and what we've uh, been, uh, some of our accomplishments since we last talked. Uh, so really a lot of our focus has been on the COVID measures archive and trying to get that more uh, well established. And so uh, with, you know, with Nanda, we've added three new studies to that. We've added uh, wave two of the National Wellbeing Survey. Uh, we have uh, some data from uh, uh, Dr. Payan uh, Hung and, uh, Xiao and Dr. Xiaoming Li, um, and also uh, have now added the uh, COVID-19 supplement uh, for the National Health and Aging Trends Study. So again, it's really trying to, to build up this, this archive so that uh, you know, when you go to it, you can find you know, pretty much any kind of behavioral or social intervention that would be related to COVID and see how other large studies have measured that in the past. Uh, we've also been working hard uh, with the National Library of Medicine on common data elements. And we do have some, uh, some exciting news. Uh, that our policy CDEs that we worked with you guys to develop and submitted for endorsement uh, were approved and endorsed by the National Library of Medicine, uh, which is, I can see John cheering in the background. It was, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a long and intensive process, but we're really excited to, to be near the end of that. They're, they're not available in the NLM repository yet, but you can see them on our website site uh, and we hope that they will be available soon um, and that QR code should take you directly to that. Um, I've also been working with a, uh, with a really amazing undergraduate student uh, on a, a large systematic review looking at policy mitigation uh, measures against COVID-19 and uh, anybody who's done a systematic review knows just how labor intensive it is. And so I thought I would just, we're, we're kind of nearing the end of our initial screening, which is very exciting. Uh, so I thought I'd put that progress bar up there, uh, but we're really uh, excited to, to kind of be moving uh, forward with that. And I think we'll have some, some interesting things to share uh, down the line. Um, then I also want to talk a little bit about the, the researcher support um, that, uh, that we offer as well. So using and creating common data elements. I know myself or, or Megan, um, you know, have, have met with a number of you on, you know, CDEs and, and, and you know, thinking about uh, common data elements and, and harmonizing measures. Um, and, you know, we, we hope that that is helpful and, and continues to be something that we, we offer. Um, we also, uh, you know, have been uh, working hard with the COVID measures archive and preparing and depositing data and metadata. And then I want to give uh, a shout out to uh, Dr. James Wagner um, and Brady West uh, was was here, but he had to step out. Our amazing uh, technical consultants who uh, you know really were lucky to have their expertise in, in methodology and, and survey research. Um, and I know a lot of you guys have been able to, to take advantage uh, of that. So thank you, uh, uh, James. 
Um, we're also really excited to uh, announce, uh, and I think any of you guys have already heard about this, but we have four new pilot grantees uh, this year. And so uh, we have Dr. Ethan Lin and Dr. Judith Seltzer. Uh, and then we have Dr. Uh, Wang from uh, the University of California, San Francisco, Dr. Elaine Hill, and then Dr. Ufoma, uh, who is at the Washington University in St. Louis. And I, I feel like we have a really good group of, uh, uh, of pilot grantees this year. And, and so we're really excited to continue working with you guys over the, over the coming year. Uh, we've also been uh, kept fairly busy. Uh, you know, I, I've been joking that it's kind of a roadshow talking about the, uh, uh, the COVID measures archive, but we've been uh, you know, at the ICPSR uh, biennial meeting, uh, our Love Data Week. Uh, Megan had a talk uh, in Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, that was really uh, well attended and well received. Um, and then also our invited session at the at PAA last month. Um, so again, really uh, has been has been nice to go out and actually share you know some of the work that the consortium is doing and some of the work that we've been able to do with you guys at the coordinating center. Um, we're continuing to work with the uh, Center for uh, Health Research Transformation here at you know, the University of Michigan to produce our kind of research impact report, which a lot of you guys will remember is when we uh, you know, are kind of bugging you after the annual meeting about uh, you know, kind of what key findings would you like to share? Can we make them publicly available or not? Um, and here you can see a really, uh, this I believe is, yeah, it looks like Cameron's uh, page. Um, and again, they do a really nice job and I think it's a, it's a great thing to have every year to kind of summarize the, all of the different uh, work and research that's, that's gone on in the previous 12 months. Um, and we are hoping to share the previous version uh, on uh, uh, our website by the end of May, uh, but I know there are a few folks that still have ongoing embargoes and so uh, we'll be communicating with you to, to get around that. Um, we also, you know, try to keep our website relatively up to date. Um, and so we can see uh, Bruce's great profile here um, on some of the work that, that they're doing. Um, and again, you know, this is, this is one of the ways that we, you know, are able to, to get the word out about the amazing work that you guys are doing. Uh, it's a, there's a lot of research going on as I, uh, you know, around COVID-19. And so I think, you know, when we can provide these highlights, it's a really nice way to, to introduce folks to the, the really important stuff that you guys are doing. Um, it's something that we haven't talked to you guys about uh, and it's been kind of happening behind the scenes is the, the really great work of our bibliography team. And so we have several librarians that uh, you know, actually kind of scour the literature daily um, and look for uh, publications or research products from consortium members. Uh, and so then we regularly update the publications page with that. Um, and they also, you know, at some, uh, at some points will you know, write up little summaries that, that talk about kind of the key points. And so again, it's kind of another way to disseminate your research and for us to kind of stay on top of uh, what you guys are working on. Um, and while we do have these amazing librarians, it is always helpful if you guys give us a heads up if you have something. <laughs> we, we always do appreciate that, though we know it's not always, always feasible. Um, and here are some of the, uh, you know, the, the kind of, uh, you know, summaries that, that I was talking about. They're called Current Events in the Bib. And uh, we actually had two U01, U01 funded publications that were uh, uh, featured in this uh, over the last year. And so uh, one is, uh, you know, Dr. Shannon Monnet's group, the National Wellbeing Survey, and the other was uh, related to uh, some of the, the COVID-19 research that the NANDA group, uh, Drs. Knopperton and Clark, uh, were doing as well. Um, so obviously things are a little bit different this year with the annual meeting. We changed the timing from uh, September to May uh, out of, you know, some, uh, some folks raised concerns uh, related to conflicts. Um, so we hope this is more convenient. Uh, we also have obviously moved it to, to Ann Arbor. Um, and, but we, we really appreciated uh, the, the good feedback on kind of the programming uh, aspect of the, the conference as well and tried to take that into account and in how we organized this. So one thing that um, we heard loud and clear was uh, making you know, more opportunities and providing more space for, uh, for trainees and early career researchers. And so we were really excited to uh, it have invited presentations and a poster session this year. And uh, when we put out that call for abstracts, we were thrilled with the, with the response rate that we got. And uh, it, the, the quality of the research that we got in those abstracts was phenomenal and it was so, uh, it was an extremely difficult uh, decision to, to make who, you know, would get an oral presentation versus who would get a poster because uh, they were really, really impressive. 
Um, we also are, uh, you know, trying the, uh, the kind of breakout sessions, trying to provide other opportunities for, for folks to have more unstructured or, or semi-structured conversations with each other around kind of key questions. Um, so we'll be curious to hear uh, your, your thoughts on that. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, we will, we will still have our presentations from U01 projects, uh, from some pilot grantees, and, and from myself. So shifting gears just a little bit, I want to talk about some potential next steps. Um, that we're gonna be looking at over the coming year. Um, so as I mentioned, we are actively working on curating uh, the US COVID-19 county policy database. Uh, we are working, we are always looking for uh, metadata deposits from uh, consortium members. Uh, some of you we've already reached out to about this. Um, and uh, we, and if you have questions on what this process looks like, or if you know, a, a particular you know, data from a particular study uh, is relevant to this, uh, please reach out. We're always happy to uh, respond via email or set up a time to, to chat. Um, and we also are looking at metadata from other major studies of COVID-19. So kind of the first step with this was the, uh, um, the, uh, the NHATS COVID-19 supplement, but we're currently working with the panel study on income, income dynamics uh, to get their COVID data added um, along with a few others. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, James and, and Brady are, uh, are still providing uh, their consulting services. And uh, oh, thank you. Um, and again, this is just kind of a reminder of their, uh, some of their key areas of expertise. I would not say that this is an exhausted list at all. Um, and really, one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting is available. And to set up a consulting appointment, um, you can just send uh, an email to this, this email address. And again, I just want to highlight how nice of a resource this is. Um, I can see Claire nodding, so thank you. Um, and so again, I think we're really fortunate to, to have both of them. So, and then building on some of these accomplishments that we've talked about a little bit more, um, we are going to have another round of pilot grants uh, later on this year. So that call will go out probably around September. And we're looking to fund again two to four uh, pilot grants uh, this year um, of up to sixty thousand dollars in total costs. Uh, we're also, you know, again really interested in uh, collaborative presentations or conferences. And so, if you have ideas for panels or, or you know, invited sessions, things like that, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. And if there's anything the coordinating center can do to help facilitate that, we're, we're happy to do it. Um, also, if you can let us know about your appearances at conferences, we're also happy to, to help publicize that as well. So a couple of new directions that we're, we're taking uh, is, is one is kind of increasing our focus on research impact. Um, and, you know, again, as we're kind of finishing up our third year, we're moving into that, that part where, you know, uh, the, the studies are mature enough that there, there are constantly new findings coming out. And so we're really trying to uh, be intentional at uh, you know, how can we, you know, uh, do a better job of, of disseminating uh, the key findings? And so in one of those areas, we're, we're looking at research briefs, um, you know, or kind of one pagers, you know, similar to what uh, uh, Dr. Monnet's group um, does at Syracuse. Uh, and then something that I, I talked uh, to with Bruce about last year uh, was we're thinking about, and this is something that we're hoping to talk about over our working lunch tomorrow, is a uh, kind of collaborative manuscript, you know, kind of highlighting what do we, you know, what have we learned from COVID-19 and what does that mean for the next pandemic? Um, and so kind of the, the best way and the logistics on how to do something like that is something that we're really excited to talk to you about. Um, we're also working with the Research Impact Office at the, uh, the Vice President for Research here at UM uh, to look for and explore additional opportunities for dissemination to non-scholarly audiences. Um, and we are also not done with common data elements. So we're, we're exploring other areas where we think we can provide value. And one of those uh, areas is uh, kind of essential and frontline work. We have a number of, of U01 projects that are actively working on this. And this is, again, something that we, we hope to discuss a bit uh, with you guys over uh, the working lunch tomorrow. Um, we also have a potential change that we're exploring to our annual meeting for next year and wanted to float this with you guys to see, to kind of gauge interests. Um, so I'm also a faculty affiliate at the Michigan Center for Infectious Disease Threats. And next year, next March, will mark the fifth anniversary of when WHO declared uh, COVID-19 a pandemic. And so it seemed an opportune time to potentially, you know, link, uh, you know, the more clinical research, uh, infectious disease side of things with uh, social science research. 
um, as that is you know, kind of a key goal of, of this consortium. And so what we've you know, been thinking about was having uh, you know, our standard kind of closed two day meeting, but then adding an open third day. Um, so again, did not wanna do this without uh, you know, talking to you guys about it, because I know uh, how busy your schedules are and adding another day is, well, it's adding another day. So, um, so that's again, something that we're, we're really excited to, to talk to you guys about. So with that, I just wanna again, thank our amazing uh, funders at NIA and OPSSR. Um, and I will uh, conclude and, and hand things back over to Maggie. So thank you. <laughs>